Good afternoon. First year students, univers university leaders gathered, it is a joy to be with each of you. My name is Johnny Cagwin. My pronouns are he, him, and I serve as the coordinator of religious life programs here at Carnegie Mellon University in Student Affairs. For many, a spiritual or religious or secular identity helps them to make sense of the world and their individual experiences throughout life. Even though there may be significant differences in, our, in these worldview identities, ideals like a desire for justice and peace, a posture of thankfulness and hospitality, or a responsibility to give and serve others are shared in common. In this brief invocation, I invite you to join me in a moment and a practice of gratitude and pause. In a moment, I will invite you to close your eyes, whether literally or in your own imagination, and to walk with me through a few statements. As you listen, consider who or what comes to mind. Consider all that you have experienced that has helped you achieve this new start at CMU. Please join me. Each of us is on our own journey in life and we each hold many things in common. Each of us have family, friends, teachers, coaches, or mentors who have helped us reach this day. And for them, we are filled with gratitude. Each of us have experiences of joy, of success, of celebration. And for these, we are filled with meaning and hope. Each of us have experiences of pain, of struggle, and of confusion. And in these, we seek to understand how to continue to grow in the face of adversity. Each of us have an identity, a community, an inner drive that helps to ground us and understand the world we live in. And for these, we are thankful. As you navigate what comes to mind, I invite you to place one hand over your heart to slow your breathing as you take a couple deep breaths. You are truly you. And you are really here. And we all join in thankfulness for the opportunities that lay ahead for each of you. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Good afternoon, and welcome to Convocation 2022. My name is David Yu, and I'm one of the head orientation counselors. It is my honor to welcome all of you to the Carnegie Mellon community. We have gathered here this afternoon to celebrate the formal start of your first year with Convocation. This event marks the beginning of your college career, 
your first steps into the next stages of your life. To your left and right, you are joined by equally talented classmates from across the world. Cherish them well, for the friends you make here will carry with you for the rest of your lives. My time at CMU has been nothing short of extraordinary. Whether coding my 112 project in Gates or preparing for a case competition in Tepper, I have made countless memories with the people around me, doing challenging and exciting work I could have never imagined. Convocation is the ceremony that marks your arrival at Carnegie Mellon and is your first step into making these memories too. Our orientation theme this year is reimagine. As you begin this journey, I implore you to reimagine who you are and who you want to be. College is a time to explore your interests, values, and identities, and CMU is a place unlike any other. You'll have boundless opportunities to grow academically, professionally, socially, and personally. As I enter my senior year, I think back to all the ways that CMU has shaped me and the ways that I have contributed to this community. Whether in the classroom, on the field, or at a lab, we can't wait to see the contributions you'll make to our community here and beyond. It is now my pleasure to introduce Carnegie Mellon's Provost and Chief Academic Officer, Jim Garrett. Prior to his appointment, to this role, he served as a member of the CMU faculty for over 20 years before becoming Dean of the College of Engineering in 2013. Provost Garrett is a lifelong tartan, having received his bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degrees in civil and environmental engineering from CMU. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jim Garrett to the podium. Good afternoon, Carnegie Mellon class of 2026 plus. David, thank you for that very kind introduction. And a big thank you to you and the other head orientation counselors for creating such an engaging experience for our first year students. Let's give them a round of applause. As David said, I'm Provost Jim Garrett, and it's my sincere pleasure to join President Jahanian, our deans, and university leadership in welcoming you to Carnegie Mellon University's community. Each year, I get so excited for Orientation Week because you can feel the energy of a new academic year beginning. I hope you're enjoying the excitement of your first few days here on campus as you begin this exciting new chapter of your lives. Of course, at one point or another, we all experience some anxiety or uncertainty about new beginnings. But at this moment, as I consider the multiple and diverse voices and talents in your class, I feel that each of you has an extremely bright future. As David said, I myself received three degrees from Carnegie Mellon. I left Pittsburgh for a few years, but came back in 1990, and I never left. Thank you. <laughs> I, I had and still have such a deep respect for the unique culture of Carnegie Mellon, for the people, for the amazing people, for the academic rigor, the collegiality, and, and for the unlimited research and creative opportunities that our students have. And you surely have your own reasons that brought you to Carnegie Mellon. Maybe you were drawn to this campus for our excellent fine arts programs. Or maybe it was the opportunity to learn from the world's most brilliant designers, scientists, engineers, thought leaders in the humanities and social sciences, or policy and business. The bottom line is that most of you chose CMU precisely for its outstanding academic reputation. You expect us to deliver an exceptional education 
and we promise each and every one of you that we will deliver. Every year at Convocation, it is our tradition for the Provost to quote our benefactor, Andrew Carnegie, when he established what we now know as Carnegie Mellon University. Our story began on November 15, 1900, when Carnegie wrote to the mayor of Pittsburgh announcing his wish to establish a technical school. He wrote, in the city of Pittsburgh, if the city of Pittsburgh can furnish a site, I shall be delighted to furnish money for such a school. There are many questions to decide involving investigation, careful study, and much labor. But I am in a position to assure you that my heart is in the work. With that letter, this university began, and the phrase, my heart is in the work, became our motto. And I am confident that this phrase will come to resonate in different ways for each of you. In 1905, the inaugural class enrolled 120 students. Most attended part-time in the evenings after work with more than 90% hailing from Pittsburgh. Now, over a century later, your class looks a little different. And I'm pleased to celebrate the diversity of this incoming class. For example, this year CMU has 1,736 first-year students hailing from 46 states and 42 countries. Nearly 20% of you are joining us from international locations. And 13% of your classmates are first-generation college students. Our global, intellectually diverse community has a deep tradition of excellence in education, research, creativity, and scholarship. Today, you join our community, and we are a better university because you are here. We are committed to your success, and we will work hard to make sure you have an inclusive, supportive, and excellent experience here. As you start your journey, I encourage you to immerse yourself in the culture and activities Carnegie Mellon has to offer. We have a hands-on approach to learning, and your active participation will lead you to success both in and out of the classroom. Reach out to your professors. Tap into the knowledge of your academic advisors. Take advantage of the resources right here on campus like the Student Academic Success Center. They are all here to help you learn at your highest capacity. And please take a ch the chance to get to know me too. Consider this your formal invitation to join me during my monthly open office hours so we can talk about how things are going for you. I also love hearing about your ideas and aspirations. I look forward to seeing you on campus and in the classroom as, as we get this year started. And I wish you all an amazing year here at Carnegie Mellon. Now it is my pleasure to introduce student body president, Natalie Salazar. <laughs> Natalie is pursuing a degree in business administration with a minor in public policy and politics. She is a proud first-generation Latina from Houston, Texas, and believes that each individual has the ability to change the world. And because of that, she is especially passionate about giving back to her community and positively impacting individuals around her. This is one of the many reasons we are so glad to have her serve as your student body president. Please join me again in welcoming Natalie Salazar. Thank you, Provost Garrett. And howdy, Carnegie Mellon class of 2026 plus. I am so excited and humbled to be one of the first people to welcome you into our Carnegie Mellon community and Tartan family. As Provost Garrett mentioned, 
I am a first generation Latina from Houston, Texas, and your student body president. Before I dive into the stories and reflections that I would like to share with you today, I want to take a moment to congratulate each and every one of you. Not everyone has the privilege of calling themselves a tartan, so you should be especially proud for working hard and making it here today. This is a huge accomplishment. As a rising senior and soon to be alumnus, this is a very special and full circle moment. As three years ago, I was sitting under this exact same tent when I was nominated to receive the class of 2023 plus convocation tile. Trust me when I say, it is a true testament to how fast these four years at Carnegie Mellon will fly by. I remember my own convocation like it was yesterday. During this time, Old Time Road was at the top of the music charts. Kylie Jenner's Rise and Shine was an internet sensation. And Baby Yodas were literally every corner you turned. I remember sitting next to my Tartan Scholar friends, feeling terrified of being the first in my family to leave home. Deciding to come to Pittsburgh was one of the toughest decisions. It meant that I would leave my parents, who sacrificed everything they knew to leave Mexico and pursue the American dream. It meant that I would be the first in my family to leave Texas to pursue a higher education. However, I was determined to make my parents proud and be the first in my family to graduate college. My definition of family quickly evolved over time at Carnegie Mellon. The same folks that I sat next to during convocation quickly became my second family and helped me grow in ways I could have never imagined. During my freshman year, my family wasn't able to visit frequently. So when Thanksgiving break rolled around, I wasn't able to travel home because I simply could not afford it. This was especially hard as a freshman, but thanks to my Tartan Scholar family, my amazing academic advisor, and the Center of Diversity and Inclusion, I quickly found a place that felt like home, away from home. Right now, in this moment, I invite you to introduce you to your neighbor. Go ahead, give them a high five. Dab them up if you must. If there is one piece of advice that I would give you, it would be to step aside from the academics and take time to introduce yourself to your fellow Tartans. Share your story with them and embrace who you are. You are now a part of our community. You never know. These folks may become your second family here at Carnegie Mellon. Now, don't get me wrong. I know these past few years have been really rough for us. Many of your high school experiences were impacted by the pandemic. Many of us have lost loved ones and even felt like we've lost a part of ourselves. However, instead of focusing on the loss, I wanna take a moment to acknowledge the beginning. This is the beginning of your journey at Carnegie Mellon. For many of you, this is the first time that you ever leave home. Beginnings can certainly feel overwhelming and scary at times, but they're also really exciting and amazing opportunities to reimagine your future. When I arrived at Carnegie Mellon, I certainly felt intimidated by the smart and talented peers around me. I felt like everyone seemed to know exactly what they were doing, and I felt so scared of leaving my family behind. I vividly remember hugging my mom one last time before heading to Tartan Scholar Week. I felt terrified, but I remembered what my mom shared with me. Echale ganas, which means give it your all in Spanish. Family continues to be the most important part of my life. Over the years, 
My Tartan family has been essential for helping me create my own community at Carnegie Mellon. They have provided me a shoulder to lean on when times are tough and celebrated some of my biggest victories with me. While being a first generation student is by no means easy, deciding to come to Carnegie Mellon has been one of the best decisions I have ever made. Over the years, my Tartan family has helped me appreciate the community that I am a part of. All of you sitting here, regardless of identity, background, or ethnicity, now have a place to call home. So I encourage you, put yourselves out there, introduce yourself to your fellow Tartans, and create your own family here. Be your authentic selves, and embrace the change that will happen over your time at Carnegie Mellon. Take some time to step back from the academics and reimagine what your future will look like. Your possibilities are endless here, and there is an entire community rooting for your success. On behalf of the entire student body and Tartan community, I want to once again congratulate you and welcome you to our very own Tartan family. We are so excited to support you and see what you accomplish in the future. Thank you. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Mr. David Coulter, a CMU alumnus Mr. Coulter serves as chair of Carnegie Mellon's Board of Trustees, a partner with Warburg Pincus LLC in New York City. He previously held leadership positions at several financial services organizations, including 22 years at Bank America. Please join me in welcoming David Coulter to the podium. Thank you, Natalie, and congratulations on your new position, and you're a hard act to follow. <laughs> on behalf of the Board of Trustees at Carnegie Mellon, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to campus and your first year at CMU. I, of course, think you made the right decision to come here. You have a few more important speakers coming up this afternoon, so I'm going to try to be very short and, I'm, and leave you with just one point that was important to me as I look back on my time at Carnegie Mellon. When I go over my business career and think about some of the successes and of course a few of the f failures, one thing is very clear and that is the Im impact CMU has had on me as I have worked through those issues and opportunities. I'm not talking about a particular discipline or course of study, but Carnegie Mellon taught me how to think rigorously, both conceptually and analytically. And I've used those skills practically every day of my business life to distinguish myself and to demonstrate that with models and analytics and data, you can make much, much better decisions. But it wasn't just that that I think makes Carnegie Mellon special. I've asked a, a few of the old time professors here why Carnegie Mellon seems so special. Nobody really has a, a perfect answer. Could be the size of the school and the ability to attract people from around the world. Could be that we're in a city, uh, but in a little enclave in that city. Or it might even be a little bit of Pittsburgh, which is a very straightforward town. But I think how that plays itself out is you have the opportunity here to interact freely and easily with a wide range of people that might be your longtime friends, be it from science or Tepper or humanities and social science or fine arts, computer science, engineering, robotics, I'm trying to work, make sure I don't exclude anybody. Real science, um, you have an opportunity to get along with diverse groups of people, to interact with them, 
and perhaps to lead them, and that's what you're likely going to be. You may be a loner for all your life, but you're likely going to work in groups and try to move things forward. So I hope Carnegie Mellon has some of that impact on you, and I hope you grab it. Good luck in your time here. Thank you, Mr. Coulter. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Catherine Whitehead. Dr. Whitehead is a professor of chemical engineering and biomedical engineering here at Carnegie Mellon University. Her lab develops nanoparticles like those used in the COVID mRNA vaccines and systems to enable protein medications like insulin to be taken orally. She is the recipient of numerous awards including the NIH Director's New Innovator Award, and she recently gave a TED Talk on the COVID vaccines. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Katie Whitehead. Hi. Thanks, David, for the introduction. How's it going, everybody? So looking back about 100 years ago, uh, I did my undergraduate work at the University of Delaware. I entered my freshman year as a major in chemical engineering, and I had no idea what that was. Our first day of class, the chemical engineering professor looked at us and said, look at the person on your left, look at the person on your right, and at the end of four years, only one of you will be left. <laughs> really welcoming, right? Very nice. Yeah, I was super touched. And um, yeah, that, uh, oh, I should say that's not how we roll at Carnegie Mellon. You're not gonna really have that here. <laughs> So I found that comment super irritating because I do not like it when people tell me that I can't do something. And even though I had no idea what chemical engineering was, I set my sights on a chemical engineering degree, determined that I would be one of the few people who won that prize. And I got my prize by putting my head down, burying myself in work staying up late, spending long hours with my fluid mechanics textbook, and even having the occasional panic attack before physical chemistry exams uh, held on Saturday mornings to add to our misery. I treated my undergraduate education like it was a competition, and I didn't spend much time with my classmates, convinced that I had to impress only my instructors to get high grades. Sounds really fun, right? That's what you want, yeah? I don't want you to do what I did. It wasn't until years later, when I was finishing my PhD, that I realized that I'd been thinking about this all wrong. I was talking one day to my PhD advisor about MIT, which is where I was about to go to do my postdoctoral research and it's where he did his own PhD. And I asked him what the best thing was about MIT, expecting to, him to say that it has every resource under the sun. But he looked at me, pausing, and said that the best thing about MIT is the people. The people, I asked. And he said, yes, the people, and not the people that you think. You'll want to impress the famous professors, but you know they can help you to a degree, but they're only part of the equation. The most important people will be the ones around you, the students. They will make you better if you let them, and they'll be there for you long after the fancy professors are gone. And so I left for my next adventure, willing to give this different perspective a try. And once I decided to let people in, 
my life and career developed a richness that I hadn't imagined. And I realized that I could reimagine what my career could now become. My lab mates came from diverse backgrounds and from many unfamiliar scientific areas, at least to me, biology and chemistry, material science and medicine. These people taught me the world, not just in the lab and in other formal environments, but also over coffee and beers and intramural softball games, which I did not at all excel, but it was still really important. I'm here as a professor at an elite institution because I embrace my peers, learning from their ideas and their diversity and their camaraderie. The connections that you make in your years at CMU will benefit you long after you leave campus. Eventually, your friends uh, and classmates they will excel in their own careers, as you will in yours. And you'll continue to help each other then, too. For example, I was invited to give the TED Talk that David mentioned last summer, thanks to one of my colleagues who remembered how much I had taught her about science communication. And I get to have fun advising nascent biotech companies started, my, by, started by my pals because they value the perspective and advice that I gave them long ago. Until recently, many of us took people for granted. But then, in the blink of an eye, we went from interacting with tens or hundreds of people a day down to just a few. You, as high school students, were removed from your classrooms, your sports and after-school activities, and your friends. And instead, you were in the unfortunate position of education by computer. You learned algebra while slouching on your bed, or your couch, or maybe your kitchen table, trying to concentrate while your dad took videos of your 10-year-old sister doing jumping jacks to fulfill her gym requirements. Anybody? Anybody see that? Anybody out there? I saw it. It wasn't good. <laughs> And if you were like me, you didn't wear real pants for over a year. No pants. <laughs> During these terrible years, many of us went inward, right? We took refuge in our electronic devices and social media, binge watching Netflix uh, and endless games of Candy Crush that it turned out left us feeling inadequate and unsatisfied. And why did we feel this way? It's because we had lost the relationships that made us human. Most of us now have made our way back to varying degrees, but few people in this world have the opportunity that lies in front of you. Here on this campus, you have the opportunity to reimagine a new beginning. You're joining a community replete with amazing people, people who will buoy, buoy you, excuse me, after these years adrift in a stormy sea. These talented people will teach and inspire you, and they'll help you through the challenging times that you face here, and they'll celebrate with you throughout your victories if you let them. So please, be like me and keep your eye on the prize of your ultimate degree from Carnegie Mellon. But also, be better than me by welcoming the invaluable education you'll receive from your marvelous peers and the beautiful relationships that will sustain you throughout the rest of your life. Thank you. And it is now my pleasure to ask David Yu to present the 2026 plus class tile.
Thank you, Dr. Whitehead, for your perspective and advice. It is now my honor to introduce and award the class tile to this first year class. As Dr. Garrett mentioned, when Carnegie Mellon University opened our doors in 1905, 120 students comprised the charter class. When these students graduated in June 1908, a bronze tile was installed in the floor of the entrance to Baker Hall to commemorate their accomplishments. In that tradition, a tile has been added to the floor each year thereafter to honor the most recent graduating class. Each year, we award the class tile to two first-year students who have been exemplary participants in the first-year orientation program. It is my pleasure to present the class of 2026 plus with your class tile. Eugene Young is a first-year student in the College of Engineering and is from Ohio. He, li he lives in Raison Fifth. He was nominated for his vibrant energy and willingness to try new things. Emma Kim is a first-year student in the College of Engineering and is from Pittsburgh. She lives in West Wing. She was nominated because she found out about another resident's birthday and helped the staff plan a surprise celebration. Will Eugene and Emma please come forward? It is our hope that this tile will be passed through the ownership of each college over the next four years. Through being passed department to department, I'm confident that by commencement, it will reflect numerous memories from the entire class of 2026 plus. The next four years will hold many things for you. New people, new experiences, and new challenges. I hope that when your tile is added to Baker Hall upon your commencement, you will have made the most of these new opportunities and contributed in your own unique way to the Carnegie Mellon community. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the 10th president of Carnegie Mellon University, Dr. Farnam Jahanian. <laughs> Known for his passionate engagement with students, and his dedication to improving their experience on campus, Dr. Jahanian has had an enormous impact at Carnegie Mellon, and he and his wife, Tris, are also proud parents of a CMU alumna. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Farnam Jahanian. Well, first of all, <clears throat> David, thank you for your leadership throughout orientation and for your kind introduction. Thank you. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge and thank all of our fabulous speaker, Johnny Cagwin, for his inspiring words. Of course, Professor Catherine Whitehead, our outstanding faculty speaker, Pro Provost Jim Garrett, student body president, Natalie Salazar, Natalie, can you imagine? It's been four years. And Natalie, actually, earlier this afternoon, she said, I can't believe I'm a senior. Last time I was here uh, in an orientation tent when I was a freshman. So congratulations to you as well, Natalie. And of course, um, our board chair, uh, David Coulter. David, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everything that you do for Carnegie Mellon. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Carnegie Mellon class of 2026 plus.
So uh, when we said the parents event, I started a, with a question and I want to also this afternoon start with a couple of questions. Now remember, on Sunday we were in different rooms so I could not hear all of you. Now you're all under this tent. So my first question for you is, are you still excited to be here? David, I think they're excited to be here. All right. Are you happy to be attending college in person? And finally, how about this? Are you glad your parents have finally left town? Yeah, I knew that was coming. All right, let me also take this opportunity to welcome all of the members of the university's leadership with me on this stage behind me, including our deans, associate deans, vice provosts, vice presidents, students. I know you've already started to get to know your dean and college leadership, but there's also one more person that I would like to introduce to you besides the deans and the leadership team that's behind me. It's our Dean of Admissions, Mike Steidel. Mike and his team did an amazing job handling more than 34,000 applications this year. I think Mike probably read all of them. Earlier this year, Dean Steidel announced that his intention to retire at the end of this academic year after 45 years with the university. Let me tell you, Mike is a tartan through and through. I know Jim Garrett spent all of his career here and Mike actually has been here longer than Jim. As CMU alumnus, he began his admissions career as a tour guide here in 1974. And then he never left. He, of course, is an alum of Carnegie Mellon. Under Mike's leadership, impressive leadership, the university has witnessed our admission numbers reach impressive new heights. In fact, in just past 10 years, we have seen the number of applicants to CMU almost double. Mike, as you celebrate your last convocation as Dean of Admissions, and on behalf of the entire university community, thank you for your incredible commitment to CMU. Please stand to be recognized. I would also like to extend a very special thanks to everyone who made this orientation week such a success. Especially Gina Castellino, our Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, and her entire team. Thank you, Gina, and the team. Oh, there you are. Orientation week success depends on relentless enthusiasm and dedication of, yes, yes it does, on so many people. I want to also thank the 300 plus students, volunteers, staff, faculty, assisting more than 250 orientation events, not to mention the 144 resident assistants, community advisors, and house fellows who are helping you settle in your new homes across our 14 first-year communities. You know, especially as you get used to being together for the first time, their welcoming presence is so valuable and truly appreciated. 
In addition, there are 130 orientation leaders and counselors who have made your first few days so special. At this time, please join me in thanking your eight outstanding head orientation counselors. When I call your name, please stand to be recognized. Ready to go? Jacob Adams for Fifth Avenue Neighborhood. Jacob, come on. You are allowed to clap for other neighborhoods, okay? Leela J for Donner House. Victoria Liu for Morwood E Tower. Nish Nilakantan for Hammerschlag, Boss, and McGill. Aiden Pinto for Welsh, Scoble, and Henderson. Michael Zhang for Stever House. Michelle. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, where are you? Oh, there we are. Michelle Zhang for Stever House. Let's hear it again. And of course, David Yu for Mudge. David. And last but not least, I would like to thank Iris Chang, Alex Strasser, Shannon Ding, and this entire student staff of the Activity Board Technical Committee who ran all the technical needs for orientation week programming in the tent. Once again, let's all give to, let's give a round of applause for all of these leaders, organizers, volunteers. Please join me. Let's clap. <laughs> Where was we? Oh, I missed it. West Wing. Oh. Okay. We we missed one. Now you get a big round of applause because we missed one. Julian Adler for West Wing. <laughs> Sorry about that, Julian. I'll buy you lunch tomorrow. How's that? All right. Over the past last five days, you've already began to absorb the CMU culture and learn the rhythm of our campus life. And of course, you've started to hear bagpipes. That's usually a clue that something special or ceremonial is about to happen. Today is no different. Today is the official start of your college experience. The next four years will undoubtedly be some of the most transformative of your young lives. You will begin lifelong friendships and discover passions that ignite academic and professional careers. CMU will change you, and you will change CMU. As I mentioned during my welcome address on Sunday, you have arrived at Carnegie Mellon University at a pivotal time for humanity. The future is constantly evolving, thanks in part to rapid advances in digital technologies and access to unprecedented amount of data. And it's not just technology that's changing. As innovations and new ideas percolate across our society, we increasingly rely on the boldness of visual arts, music, and theater to process and understand where we have come from and to envision where we're going. The pandemic has only amplified and accelerated societal change, causing seismic shifts in the way we work, the way we connect with friends, the way we can conduct business, and even how we learn. There has never been a more exciting time to be a student and to have the world and all of the opportunities right in your fingertips. While I can't predict the future and I can't predict what lies ahead, 
I know that your generation has the power to design a post-pandemic future that's more inclusive, it's more equitable, more inspiring, and more sustainable. That makes me very optimistic that humanity's best days lie ahead. As you set out to make your mark, I want you to keep in, your mind, keep in mind, Carnegie Mellon is more than just academics. We're a community connected to one another by a common sense of purpose, pride, and spirit. By a core set of values that include collaboration, empathy, inclusion, and respect. Let these values guide you in your interactions with one another and with the faculty and staff on our campus. Here at Carnegie Mellon, we all bear responsibility for ensuring that this university is inclusive and welcoming, where every person is treated with respect and dignity. This is a reminder that the freedom of speech is not only core to our democracy, it's also a foundational value here at Carnegie Mellon. Let it guide your experience, knowing that the respect, respectful free sharing of ideas, thoughts and opinions, is what makes us strong and fruitful. When ideas are wrong, or even when they offend you, remedy is not less speech, but more. Ideas are not defeated by suppression, they're defeated by better, more persuasive ideas. We ask you to help us nurture a culture of mutual respect on this campus and practice it day in and day out especially at the time when there are so many divisions in our society. Our campuses can serve as a model for how we can truly learn from diverse perspectives and build bridges to shared understanding. Whatever your school or college or field of study, I'm confident that each of you will not only come to respect and appreciate our unique CMU culture, you will also shape it. Class of 2026, in just a few moments, I will formally present you to your deans and officially start your CMU journey. This is a big moment. So please, let's pause to appreciate where you are and the journey you're about to embark upon. Look around. Savor the sights and sounds. In fact, I encourage you to do this throughout your career. As many older adults have probably already told you, probably with a wistful, jealous look in their eyes, college goes by so fast. So once in a while, in fact, after you leave today, when you go out on the lawn, on the cut, stop for a moment. And remind yourself that you are exactly where you want to be. And this is a wondrous moment in your life and that you have earned this rare opportunity to expand your horizons with some of the most gifted scholars on the planet. Once again, congratulations and welcome to Carnegie Mellon University. Now comes the fun part. Now I would like to ask the incoming students in each college to stand as I announce you, so that I may present you to your dean and your school or college leadership. Are you guys ready? Wow. I think we can just go home now. I, I'm, okay, I'm gonna ask one more time. Are you ready? Okay. Much better, much better. Here we go. Will the students from the College of Engineering please rise along with the Dean and the college leadership?
Dean Sanders, college leaders, faculty and staff, I present to you the engineering class of 2026. Congratulations, please be seated. You see how this works? All right. Will the students from the College of Fine Arts please rise, along with the dean and the college leadership? <laughs> dean Poole and the college leaders, faculty and staff, I present to you the CFA Class of 2026. and the 2007 Class of Architecture. Congratulations, please be seated. Will the students from the Bachelor of Humanities and Arts program, Bachelor of Science and Arts program, and the Bachelor of Computer Science and Arts program, and the Bachelor of Engineering Studies and Arts program, please rise along with their deans, Dean Poole, Dean Shinas, Dean Dorsch, dear, dear, <laughs> Dean Herber, uh, Herber, Dean Sanders, I'm running out of deans, leaders, faculty, and staff of the College of Fine Arts, the Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences, the Mellon College of Science, the School of Computer Science, and the College of Engineering, I present to you the BHA, BSA, BCSA, and BEESA, the class of 2026 plus. How's that? Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the students from Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences please rise along with the dean and the college leadership. <laughs> dean Shinas, leaders and faculty staff, I present to you the Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences class of 2026 plus. Congratulations, please be seated. Will the students from the Information Systems Program in the Dietrich and Heinz Colleges please rise along with the deans and the college leadership. Dean Krishnan, Dean Shinas, college leaders, faculty and staff of the colleges, I present to you the Information Systems Class of 2026. Congratulations, please be seated. Will the students from the Mellon College of Science please rise, along with the dean and college leadership. Dean Dorch, college leaders, faculty and staff, I present to you the MCS class of 2026. Once again, congratulations, please be seated. Will the students from the School of Computer Science please rise along with the dean and the school leadership. Danny Bear, school leaders, faculty, and staff, I present to you the SCS class of 2026. Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the students from the Tepper School of Business please rise, along with the dean and the college leadership. There we go.
Dean Baju, college leaders, faculty and staff, I present to you the Tepper School of Business Class of 2026. Congratulations, please be seated. Once again, please join me in congratulating and welcoming all of our new students across all of our outstanding academic programs. Congratulations, everybody. Even as we conclude today's convocation ceremony, the celebration of our new students will continue throughout the year. If you're new to CMU and running to me on campus, or the provost, the dean, and the faculty, I hope you will stop to introduce yourself. I look forward to meeting many of you in the days and weeks ahead. Once again, class of 2026, congratulations, and welcome to Carnegie Mellon. David, the podium is yours. In a moment, members of Carnegie Mellon's Pipes and Drums will begin playing the recessional music. So I invite you to stand and remain at your seat until they have recessed. Please stand. In closing, I'd like to express my thanks to President Jahanian, Provost Garrett, Mr. Coulter, Dr. Whitehead, Ms. Salazar, Mr. Cagwin, deans, faculty, staff, friends, and most of all you, the class of 2026 plus, for attending this special ceremony. Once again, I welcome you to the Carnegie Mellon community and wish you the best for this coming semester and the rest of your time here at CMU. Thank you and enjoy the remainder of orientation.